Hello friends, this is Raj Sastri from Raj Option Trading. Today is June 20, 2021. I want to cover stock market recap for last week and also trading ideas for next week. That's very important. And also look at the major news shaping the stock market, macro trends and top and bottom performing stocks. We'll look at uh, small cap, mid cap, large cap and mega cap. So with that, let's jump in and get started. From a major news perspective, um, you know, for the last week, I think it's mainly the F Fed. You know, Feds are making big news here. Um, on June 18th, we have Fed's Jim Bullard. He basically says interest rate hike is coming as soon as 2022. The moment Wall Street and stock market hears this, they went crazy and they sold all the big industrials, commodities, and also, you know, some technology stocks came back into favor. Um, and mortgage rates sh shot higher after Chairman Powell's comments. Um, and dollar source, crypto and growth stocks sink, which is uh, very typical here. Um, you know, and I think, you know, growth stocks recovered a little bit, but the big industrials, mining and the commodities, they kind of sank. Um, and also Powell made a statement, um, you know, this inflation would reverse over the time. Um, as a record cost for lumber and used car of shortages, they work, work themselves out. You know, that's a good thing to know because Fed is known to, you know, put out this type of news when they see inflation is high. Sometimes this uh, inflation works itself out due to the supply demand type, you know, uh, mismatches. And over the time, you know, things will work out many times. But either way, I think Fed has made its statement. And now, you know, folks like Jim Bullard, they turn to ratchet it, ratchet it up one uh, step higher. So with that, you know, next week, uh, we'll be watching very closely. And we'll be looking at some of these uh, big industrials and uh, commodity stocks, which are dropping and pick up slowly as we go forward. And also there are very good tech and biotech we can buy on uh, this weakness. So with that, on a general news perspective, industrial stocks are sliding on the Fed news. You know, probably it's a wrong response, but, uh, you know, we have to, as a individual in investors, we got to look at good stocks that are falling on these news and really buy them because there is no company specific news. Uh, these are really the bigger headline news from the Feds. I think we have to look at some of these companies and buy a little bit at a time so that way we accumulate a good uh, stock position. Uh, commodities from copper to corn tumble on China crackdown. Looks like you know China is really stockpiling some of these commodities and also with the raising dollar, um, I think these commodities are really falling down. And the rents of single family homes, they are they just saw largest gain. Looks like you know the rental market is coming back up and also housing market is coming back up. That's a good sign. And Jamie Dimon, who is the CEO of JP Morgan, he's holding the cash. Basically, JP Morgan is holding the cash because they want to be prepared for uh, inflation. Because if the inflation is there, you know, all these banks, if they have a lot of money, they can basically lend the money out. And make a good, uh, you know, good uh, profit. Gold prices drops, dollar rallies. This is where um, we have to look at some gold companies also here and some mining companies. You know, buy selectively slowly because we don't know when this uh, drop will stop. But what we can do is take advantage of these deep drops and buy a little bit and add to position. Uh, last but not least, air travel has returned. People are really traveling, especially folks who took the shots and uh, long lines in the security and the restaurants and shops. Uh, looks like it started already. You know, that kind of tells you um, rebound is on the way from a retail, travel, leisure perspective. We should probably look at some of these stocks uh, that are, you know, that will do well as we go forward. So with that, from an earning news perspective, we have some good earnings here. First is uh, Leonard, the home builder. I think uh, they earned uh, 2.65 per share versus uh, 2.36. So typically, I think what we'll do is we'll kind of look at the housing market. There are very good stocks like Leonard, uh, Dr. Horton, 
a tool brothers we can look at all these stocks typically you know i don't like to chase the stocks on these good news but you know these stocks that are reported good earnings if they drop on any of these uh, macro news i would be a buyer and uh, accumulate a nice position Adobe stock is racing after creative software company beat the expectations in every way. You know, Shantanu Narayanan, who is the CEO, I think he's got a very good track record. You know, he always uh, comes up with flying colors during this earnings call. So I would not be chasing this company um, on this uh, uh, stock earnings uh, prospects, but I would watch for this company a little bit and buy it on the down days. Davin Busters uh, ticker symbol play their stock popped 5% um, jumped up on the healthy healthy profit again play Davin Busters i think stock has uh, gone up a lot i would wait for a small pullback to add to position um, and then Kroger i think they lift their forecast uh, looks like grocery uh, aisles are doing well grocery companies are doing well uh, we will watch this also and buy as uh, as it's fit Jable, they beat the estimates. Revenue will raise year over year. As you all might be knowing, Jable is one of the biggest contract manufacturers for Apple. That tells you a little bit about what might be in store for Apple. If Jable does well, typically uh, Apple also will do well, and other companies uh, in the manufacturing and uh, you know um, and building like you know Cisco, Apple, and many of these companies will also do well. Um, as Jable does well. Work management software company Asana, I think they delivered smaller than expected Q1 loss. I think this company is started by Facebook co-founder and they want to make sure the work management is really easy and you, you don't want to look at you know multiple statuses and emails, instead use their platform. I think this company is a good one to buy on any weakness and uh, take it from there. On the negative side, we got Honest Company. I think this is started from Jessica Alba. Uh, the stock dropped um, you know, even uh, you know, because of the wider than expected loss. I would be you know, selectively buying this company. It's a good company. They got a lot of uh, good products. Uh, I think we can buy slowly. Now they might be even below their IPO price. We got Citigroup here, slumps after warning, costs are racing. Even Citigroup at here with the prospects of inter interest rates hiking, it may be okay to buy Citigroup slowly and take it from there. Oracle um, called for a less earnings guidance. I think they beat the earnings, uh, you know, um, you know, for the quarter, but their guidance was a little bit soft. So with that, I would be buying Oracle stock here. Oracle is a great company with the uh, legendary Larry Ellison and Safra Katz as a CEO. I think uh, typically it's good to buy Oracle on the drops. I've been watching Oracle stock for the longest time. Typically, whenever they drop, it's always a good time to buy Oracle. Roblox, uh, their shares are sliding after a company reports decline in the users and their spending. I think Rob Roblox, I will be you know buying you know slowly. Um, so even Kathy Woods, you know, she bought a huge chunk of Roblox. I would buy this slowly, and I also like a couple of other stocks uh, in this, uh, you know, in this online slash internet. You know, things like Upstart as an example, again a good story. I would, I would watch those stocks and buy slowly. Hexo, which is a cannabis stock, it uh, slid five percent after the earnings fall short. You know, I would be looking at the you know uh, cannabis cohort here and buy selectively and uh, add to position. So with that, let's jump in and uh, look at a few more um, news. From a stock news perspective, Baidu pushes uh, to put driverless taxis on China roads, pledging to build 1,000 cars in three years. I think, you know, um, Baidu is a good one to buy on the weakness. I've seen this company going up and down drastically. I will not buy a lot, but anytime I see weakness in Baidu, I'll buy very slowly. No hurry because this stock is known to go up and down. A lot of peaks and valleys in this stock chart. A Tesla backed CureVax shares dropped to 46.2%, mainly because it uh, looks like their treatment was 47% effective. So I would uh, buy the stock selectively. I bought some on this plunge. It recovered a little bit on Friday. I think it's a good one to buy slowly and accumulate a nice position here. 
cruise offer operators think about um, you know Norwegian cruise lines and um, um, Carnival and even uh, um, other cruise line stocks here. I think it's good to buy you know because there is a you know relief that Florida judge rules against CDC sailing order. So all of the three major ones, RC, you know, Royal Caribbean, uh, Carnival, um, and uh, Norwegian, it's good to buy uh, slowly on the down days. Vertex Pharmaceutical stock tumbles. Um, this is one of my favorite stocks here. I think they had some disappointing drug trial. You know, I would buy this along with Cathy Woods here. It's a great company. Anytime you see some, you know, weakness because of uh, uh, FDA disappointments, it's good to buy stocks like Vertex, which are very good. Uh, Cathy Woods adds 11 million in Roblox. I would, uh, you know, buy this carefully um, and, uh, you know, buy slowly. No hurry to buy a lot, but I would buy slowly. Uh, U.S. sues to stop 30 billion global insurance merger, a Aon and uh, Willis Tower Watson. I think, you know, look at these companies and see if it makes sense. Uh, typically, you know, some of these, I, l I love both of these companies. I would look for any weakness and buy slowly. Sage Therapeutics, another biotechnology company, tanked 17.5%. You know, this company has been uh, doing not so great uh, because gene therapy is really a little bit, uh, you know, sidelines. I would buy this company on this weakness and add to position slowly. Electric truck maker launched on motors, ride, shares slide after CEO and CFO resign. I think, you know, this uh, this company provides some news item saying, you know, company has got uh, going concern, meaning they may not, may not make it. Uh, I think uh, now CEO and CFO are shown the um, door. I think this company might do okay as we go forward, but I would watch this carefully. They have no revenue and a lot of promise for the future. NVIDIA drops after touching record high on the ARM deal prof prospects. I think they are turned by ARM Holdings. That could be very good for NVIDIA. But NVIDIA, since the stock is already up so much, I would uh, wait for a little uh, pullback here and there and add to position. So with that, let's jump in and look at a few um, uh, stocks that are going up and down nicely. On the upside, we got a few softer stocks like KNBE, um, MicroStrategy, um, ASAN, Shopify, APN, and so on and so forth. They're doing very nicely. You know, I like many of these stocks. I like to buy them on a downturn or pullbacks. Crypto stocks are, few crypto stocks are up, as example, um, MicroStrategy, Marathon, Riot, Coinbase, Canon and few are down as you might be knowing like BT, BTS example. I think that's a good one to buy slowly on this weakness. Cyber security stocks are up nicely. We got uh, Cloudflare, one of my favorite, uh, VRNS, SailPoint, Splunk. Splunk has been the dog for a long time. Now Splunk is getting its groove back. You know, I'm a buyer in Splunk slowly. And then you got favorite stocks like CrowdStrike, RPD, Okta, Zscaler. And few fintech, fintech stocks are up nicely. We got Square, Stone Co, and so on and so forth. I would be looking at this cohort also, trying to see which one makes sense and uh, add to position. EV stocks are up nicely. We got Green Power, X, XPAV, Lee, and so on and so forth. Now I will uh, look for down days to buy this. I will not be chasing those. And few st solar stocks are up nicely. We got Sunrun, Enphase, Solar Edge, and so on and so forth. I think still they are down, you know, for the, from 52 week high. And few biotech stocks are doing nicely. We got uh, AVXL, ITOS, so on and so forth. Yeah, I would, uh, you know, watch this carefully. You know, buy some on any weakness and uh, go from there. So on the downside, you know, here I got some of my favorites. Here you got cannabis stocks are down. Think about Tilray, Hexo, Sundial, CGC. You know, I would watch this and on this downturn, I'll be picking up and adding a, building a nice position in these stocks. And 3D printing stocks are down. Think about uh, a Desktop Metal, VJet, Stratasys, DDD. I will buy this also on the weakness slowly and build a nice position. You know, many of these stocks used to be Wall Street darlings. Think about uh, PRLB. 
this used to be a very very high flying stock uh, back in 2020 i think it's good to buy slowly and build a good position here and gene editing stocks are down think about ntla fate dtil edit and so on and so forth these stocks really tend to go up and down drastically when they're down they'll consolidate for a while then they'll shoot up I'll be buying these gene editing stocks and slowly building a nice position, get ready for upturn. Basic material stocks are down big. Think about all the stocks that ran up so well uh, because of the stock rotation from um, growth to you know these type of stocks. Think about US Steel, Cleveland Cliffs and so on and so forth. I'll be looking at this cohort also carefully and adding some to my position and take it from there. Uh, video, video and online gaming stocks are down. These are some of my favorites like Activision Blizzard, Blizzard Take-Two, EA, NetEase, even Zynga, uh, Skills, NCTY, Roblox. I'll be looking at these stocks carefully and adding to my position. Consumer cyclicals are down. You know, this is typical rotation out of this consumer cyclical and typically defensive stocks into high growth stocks like software and so on and so forth. So Tupperware, Adient, Playboy, you know, all these are down uh, big. And then you've got consumer defensive. They're also down like Tal, Darling and so on and so forth. You know, I'll be looking at these stocks carefully, especially online education stocks are down drastically. Think about TAL, EDU, even Coursera for that example. You know, I'll be looking at those stocks and adding to position slowly and building a nice position. Energy stocks are down. Think about equity, PBF, and so on and so forth. Uh, they have gone up so much. I will, I will let them cool off a little bit and then pick up slowly. And industrial stocks are down. Think about uh, TEX, XPO, TXT, Cummins, and so on and so forth. You know, I'll be watching this carefully and adding to my position slowly and take it from there. From a big indices perspective, we got uh, S&P 500, which is uh, ES. Um, as you can see here, last week was not a great week. With the Fed making the huge splash on the interest rate hike due to inflation, as you can see, stock market you know kind of understood what's going on, and it came down. Um, you know, as you can see, S&P 500 down. Um, Dow Jones Industrial with the heavy industrials, um, you know, it's, it's, it came down pretty hard. So because uh, folks try to rotate out of these industrials into a little bit safer um, secular growth stocks like software and biotechnology, as you can see here. So that's why industrials are down. And uh, NASDAQ, which kind of did pretty okay, it's kind of didn't do much for the week, but still held pretty well. So that's what is going on right now from the consumer defensive industrials, um, you know, money is going out of these sectors, which are very, which did very well early this year. And it's going into technology and the high growth stocks. Uh, Russell, small cap, Russell 2000, as you can see, big drop here. Typically, um, you know, Russell kind of is a leading indicator. If Russell drops, that tells you, you know, even stock broader markets will also drop slowly. So I would take this as a cue and, um, you know, look at this carefully. I think, you know, there may be, you know, some more weight ways to go down probably next week, Monday or probably Tuesday. There will be a little bit drop. Then it will slowly pick up as bonds. No surprise here as, um, you know, bonds go up here, uh, stock come down uh, drastically. With the interest rates, um, you know, there is a um, there is some news that interest rates might go up. That's why bond kind of went up, as you can see here. And even TNX, 10-year treasury, right now it dropped. You know, that's where you see, you know, bonds coming up, interest rates coming down. You know, typical scenario, it's an inverse relationship between the bonds and um, interest rates. Now, there is a good demand for bonds. Uh, that's why you see stock market itself is coming down. <clears throat> Crude oil, I think overall for the week, they're down. As you can see here, um, with the dollar strengthening, I think some of these commodities in the near term, they will experience a little bit weakness. 
a gold down big now all these safer uh, stocks like gold industrials and even utilities they will take some pressure here because the dollar is strengthening as you can see here that will you know hit these commodities like gold uh, and even crude oil for that matter so with that let's jump in look at some of these big big etf here it's the same story for most part s p 500 down for the week uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average down big for the week. Nasdaq held up pretty nicely. That's where all these uh, high growth stocks are back in style here. Um, um, IWM, which is you know the Russell 2000, I think it's uh, had a big drop here. Typically, it's a leading indicator of on what will come next. And uh, TLT, which is uh, you know typically 20 year Treasury which is uh, synonymous with the bond uh, that kind of went up here there's a very good demand for the bonds here i think bond is a bigger market than stocks so as bond goes up stock market kind of comes down gold is down big <clears throat> xlp is down here consumer staples are down because uh, folks are rotating out of consumer staples consumer defensive xlu you know these are typically a little bit um, you know safe haven type sectors but money is going out of these into high tech high growth and technology <clears throat> xlk technology that's holding up pretty nicely as you can see here uh, semiconductors are down a little bit i think you know this is a little temporary in my mind they've gone up so much they are cooling off a little bit here. Uh, XAR, which is, I uh, think, about big, um, you know, Lockheed Martin uh, defense contractors like uh, Northrop, they are all coming down a little bit. I think uh, we have to see, you know, these are big industri industrials. I would be buying them carefully, slowly, no hurry. XLE energy cohort is coming down mainly because dollar is going up. Um, and, um, you know, there's also supply demand type issue here. Uh, you know, I think that's why, that's why energy is coming down. Uh, XRT retail. Retail is a little bit off for the week here. I will be watching this also carefully and buy some good retail. Um, you know, one of the reasons retail is coming down is as, as dollar kind of goes up, interest rates goes up people might be trying to save some money so that way you know, they are prepared for the future iar which is uh, iyr which is a uh, real estate market that's also down a little bit i think uh, with the lumber price i think now it's stabilizing but generally there is a shortage in the real estate i think um, as market rates rates go up people will look to limit their purchases it's not happening yet but still um, iyr real estate is taking a cue that market rate, mortgage rates might go up. That will inversely affect uh, people buying home. XLF financials down big. So you know, I think uh, people are kind of wondering if the interest, if the interest rates are going up sometimes in 2022, should I be buying the bank stock now? But I would selectively buy some bank stocks slowly, but because you know, as interest rates go up, these bank stocks will do really nicely. Last but not least, um, industrials down big. So the theme is really money is going out of these industrials, financials, uh, retail, um, XLE, which is energy, um, you know, industrials, um, and even uh, XLU, XLP, gold into high growth stocks. I think that's a rotation going on right now. So with that, from a big uh, news perspective, it's a five year chart of uh, ES, which is S&P 500 future. We got SKU. SKU is very important indicator. I always pay very, very close attention to SKU. As you can see here, SKU went above 160. Uh, stock market dropped. You know, that always happens. Reasons could be several. For example, back, uh, you know, back earlier, it was COVID scare. Uh, sometimes later something else happened back in 2019 it's the you know fed um, you know raising the rates reasons could be several but one thing is sure whenever skew hits about 155 160 stock market will always take a drop a little bit later 
So this time it's uh, nothing different. Same story, you know, uh, basically skew went up and reached about 160 and the stock market dropped. This time news, news is around the Fed and the inflation, which is, uh, which is just a news. But uh, anytime uh, skew hits 155, 160, watch out. There will be some news that will be impacting stock market negatively. Uh, VIX perspective, VIX is trying to go up a little bit as you can see here slowly but surely. Um, you know, it's this is where, you know, when VIX drops a little bit, always try to buy some long-term VIX options that will kind of help you. I mean, you might lose money once in a while, but these VIX options, long-term VIX options are always good to buy when stock market is going very strong and the volatility is low. So with that, uh, let's look at uh, bond market here, ZB. 30-year uh, treasury, as you can see, a nice stick up here, um, and the uh, inverse, which is um, interest rates, nice stick down here. As the bonds go up, this is why you know stock market is market is coming down, and the double whammy here, a uh, dollar itself is going up. That will inversely affect uh, commodities like gold, copper, even uh, oil and you know these type of stocks so we got to be careful here uh, the pattern here indicates as the interest rates go, come down and uh, bonds go up and dollar goes up you got to watch out stock market a little carefully there will be some temporary weakness especially in these bigger industrial type names so let's now look at big stocks um, and first one we got here microsoft a software company uh, nothing much here company doing nicely here also there is a news that Satya Nadella CEO he also became chairman that basically tells you there's a confidence in Satya Nadella as the new CEO he's a legendary leader I would uh, buy Microsoft on any weakness here and take it from there Apple I think uh, you know they're doing nicely they came down in the beginning now they're at 130 I would uh, buy Apple on any weakness here. You know, typically, uh, Jable reported strong earnings. One of the contract manufacturers for Apple. That gives you some indication. There is something up Apple's sleeves here. I would buy Apple on any weakness. Next is Amazon. Amazon is doing great. I think they got some Prime Day coming. I would uh, buy this company on any weakness and uh, take it from there. Uh, Facebook, I think they got some temporary weakness here. Uh, stock is in the trading range. I would buy Facebook on any weakness. I've seen this movie many times. Whenever fa Facebook falls, that's always a good time to buy. And they got a very good leader, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. He will take the company in the right direction. Then we got Google here. Google is kind of trading sidelines. It's down a little bit. Google is a great stock. We got Sundar Pichai as the leader here. I would buy Google on any temporary weakness like this and take it from there. And Netflix, you know, it's a great company. I think now they're getting their groove back. Anytime Netflix is below 500, you know, I'm a buyer. And they got great leader, uh, Reed Hastings. I would uh, buy this company on this uh, temporary weakness. Right now, I think they're doing okay. Uh, anytime there's a weakness here, I would buy. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a great stock. It's been going up very nicely. Now there's a very good prospect as that this company might buy ARM Holdings. That will give this company very good uh, boost. I think this company will do well. Uh, I would not chase this stock. I would let this come down a little bit and buy. j, &J is a different story here. Uh, you know, they had to discard a lot of their um, COVID vaccine. A stock has come down drastically. I would buy this company on this weakness here. They got a terrific balance sheet and very good uh, re, you know, uh, credit rating here. I would buy this company on this weakness and hold it for a while. PayPal is doing very nicely. I would not chase this stock here. It's um, almost um, above. It's, uh, you know, uh, I think it's high from a three month basis here. I would not touch it here. It's a great stock though. I would buy on any pullback. UNH, I think it's kind of trading sidelines here. It's a great company, still at uh, 52 week high, close to 52 week high. It's a great company. I would buy this on any pullback and take it from there. Merck, I think uh, this company uh, off late, it's going up and down drastically. I would buy this company on any weakness and hold it. 
uh, Medtronic, it's been trading sideways. It's a great, um, you know, play for um, any robotics type, you know, surgery, elective surgery, um, Medtronic's, even intuitive surgical, Edward Life Sciences, all fall into same category. I would buy all these companies on this weakness slowly and add to position. Uh, JP Morgan and financials in general, JP Morgan, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, you know, all these stocks, they've been down uh, drastically here. I would be buying them on this uh, weakness and hold it for a while. You know, JP Morgan, same story. Berkshire Hathaway, same story, mainly because interest rates dropped. And there is a news that maybe end of 2022 or 2023, interest rates may go higher. Uh, these banks and financial institutions, they want interest rates to be higher now. Um, and I think fintechs like Visa, MasterCard, uh, PayPal, Square, I think all these will do probably better here. I would buy some of these names uh, into the weakness and hold it for a while. And next is, you know, uh, home improvement stores like Home Depot, Lowe's. Uh, I would be buying them selectively here. You know, stock has been dropping off late. Um, I think I would buy, the, buy, buy it on this uh, weakness. Especially Home Depot, they got a new leader, Carol Tome uh, from UPS. Uh, sorry, uh, Home Depot, I think, lost Carol Tome. But regardless, I think Home Depot is a great stock. I would uh, buy this on this weakness and hold it for a while. So now let's look at major exchange traded funds and see what makes sense here. No surprise here, 20 year treasury, which is uh, trades along with bonds, that's going up nicely. For five days, it's up 2.4%. Uh, um, dollar, it's up for last five days. I think these two are leading the chart here. And you know, QQQ, which is uh, technology and biotechnology, that's also doing okay for uh, five day stock rotation out of these uh, industrials and safe haven stocks into high growth stocks. That's why both QQQ and XLK, which is technology ETF, both of, both of them did very nicely. But as you look through here, uh, all the traditional safe haven sectors like XLY, XLV, which is healthcare, semiconductors, I think this is, uh, you know, uh, because it went, to, went so high, it's dropping here. And you know other tech sectors are all kind of down here. Typical stock rotation out of these uh, um, strong um, you know um, cyclicals into technology and biotechnology. From an ETF winner perspective, for last five days uh, we got uh, Solar, uh, which is uh, TAN. T A N is the ticker symbol here for the ETF. That did very nicely. That's why many of our solar stocks like Solar Edge, Enphase Energy, they all did very nicely. And then we got uh, FinTech, uh, which is uh, Cathy Wood's uh, FinTech uh, ETF. That did very nicely. Uh, cloud stocks have done nicely. And so is uh, Cathy's uh, Next Generation uh, you know, ETF. So the theme here is really growth is back here so slowly. And some of, the, some of the safe haven stocks are down and treasury bonds are up nicely. So as you look through here, you can see um, many of these stocks, um, you know, are doing nicely. Long term, long term, um, you know, here VGLT doing nicely here, probably around the interest rate. That's why it's uh, up here. Um, and I scan through this, you know, 10 year plus that's going well. So that's the story here. Uh, technology is up. Some of these names like cloud, uh, internet is up and interest rates are generally higher. Next, let's look at what's the losers here. What are the losers for last uh, five days, basically last week? Copper is down big. Copper is down for last couple of weeks, as you might be knowing. And looks like China is doing some stockpiling. Metals are down here nicely and uh, silver is down. You know, basically all the commodities are down nicely for the week, especially dollar higher. Um, these commodities will take some um, beat here. Um, crypto, uh, which is Ethereum, is down big 10%. And um, gold and silver, we talked about it already. Oil is down. Um, banks are down silver. Even uh, cannabis cohort is down. So you get the idea. That's what is going on here. Uh, commodities are down, bond is up, um, and uh, high growth stocks are back in fashion. 
Now let's go into uh, small cap weekly winners. So as you can see here, many of these small stock stocks, they have done very nicely. For one week, stocks like uh, Torchlight has gone up 101%, as you can see here. So the way this chart is organized is I got a ticker symbol on the top. We got, um, you know, the stock, the company name, the price, market cap. Next few columns are about sales. I need to know how much company is doing from a last 12 month sales perspective and how is the sales growth. I pay very close attention to sales growth. Very important. Then gross margin, net margin, very important. It tells you at the end of the day, is the company re company retaining some of its money and does it have a good margin? Debt to equity ratio, very important. That tells you if the company is taking too much debt on its balance sheet. For example, here, Lending Club um, and even, um, I think mainly here, Lending Club has got a high um, leverage here. They got a lot of uh, debt on their balance sheet. Probably understandable they're into lending business, but generally I look for a high debt to equity ratio and look at that stock a little more critically. And then you got ROE, return on equity, that tells you the profitability of the company. Many of these small cap stocks, they don't have too much profitability as you can see here, but one that uh, has got good one is uh, Mankind here. They got a nice ROE here, that's a good one. And RSI, RSI is a very good indicator. It's a relative strength index. Anytime RSI is above 60 or 55, I would kind of, I will not chase the stock at the time because it's already overbought and stock is already at a high uh, price. I would not chase it. Rather, I would wait for stock to come back a little bit. If you look through this chart here, for most part, RSI is really, really high. But as you scan through this, maybe E-Bond here, um, and even um, as you scan through here, IMVT, and um, you know even uh, ME, MREO, some of these are down. You got to look at them carefully. In E-Bond, I think this one is around uh, Bitcoin. You got to be a little bit careful with this stock. It's been dropping like a hammer for a while now. So with that, let's look at some of these stocks. Um, typically, I don't like to chase these companies. Typically, let's look at a few of them, my favorites. As an example here, all the stocks in bolded here, um, font, they're all, they got nice quarter over quarter sales growth here. That's why they're bolded. Uh, typically, it's okay to buy them. They're sound and strong. Um, I would kind of look at a few stocks here, like Brooklyn is one of my favorites, biotechnology company. I would uh, you know trade them in and out. Right now, they're um, up nicely. I will buy them on a you know a little bit weaker day on a pullback and uh, typically they will go up and down one of the Mimi stock here uh, very high short short interest typically and it will go up and down drastically and CCXI um, chemocentrics uh, one of the one of the great stock here stock fell off drastically 81% uh, because of the FDA approval issues I think I did a piece on this stock, uh, you know, uh, telling folks it's a good stock to buy. I think it went up nicely in the last two weeks, as you can see here, 35%, 11%. Still, it's a good buy. I would buy this company slowly and accumulate a nice position here. Then we got, uh, um, as we scan through this, we got a couple more stocks here. I will not chase them. I will uh, let them cool down a little bit and then buy. Typically, you know, when they do so well in one week, you got to wait a little bit, uh, let it cool off a little bit and then buy. Um, as you scan through here, probably, you know, Mankind, it dropped 4% on Friday. And um, as you, you know, I think other, other stocks are doing great. Um, I would uh, wait for a little bit for them to cool off. Next one, which I look very carefully, is the small cap losers. Typically, great companies on a pullback, it's good to buy and add to the position. So in this list, we got uh, you know a couple of uh, players here. Uh, we got Tal Education. Many of these online education companies have dropped so drastically. Uh, it's intriguing, intriguing to add to the position and build a nice position here. Think about Tal Education Group. That's a good one. And we have EDU and even uh, Chegg and uh, Coursera. Could buy slowly on the weakness and uh, build a build a nice position here. Then we got a couple more here. I highlighted like uh, Wuzix, uh, Jinko Solar, Hexo, Translate Bio, um, 
I am gold. You could look at these stocks. They've done, uh, you know, not so great in last couple uh, days and weeks. You could buy slowly on the weakness. And as you look at these companies, for for example, RSI, Relative, Relative Strength Index, TAL 22, completely oversold at this time. Uh, you're not paying too much to buy at this time. Same story with the Uzix. Um, even Jinko Solar, a little, little more expensive, but still it's a good one. And let's look at Hexo, Transit Bio, all below 50 from an RSI perspective. Good to buy. And also watch out. I highlighted some of this gross margin and net margin. So if you look at companies like you on 73% uh, gross margin and 4% net margin, that's a positive net margin. Same story, I would love to look at companies with a nice gross margin, and if they have a good net margin, that's, that's always good, you could uh, buy them on this weakness. And look at some of these debt to equity ratios which are high, that tells you these companies have taken too much debt on their balance sheet. So you gotta be a little bit careful on those stocks and do a little more due diligence on them. As an example, a AXL here, uh, it's got 8.7% debt to equity ratio. That's a little bit high in my books. So with that, we got few ones that you can look at. Tal, Wuzix, um, JKS, Hexo, Transit Bio, and um, I'm Gold. Next, we'll look at uh, mid-cap weekly winners. We got a lot of great stocks here. Um, typically, uh, the way this chart is organized is you got one week of performance here. The stock on the top here is, has performed very nicely in one week. Typically, I will not be chasing these stocks, but I've highlighted a few ones you can look at. Uh, one is Marathon uh, Digital, Bitcoin Play. It's down 50% from 52-week high. You could also look at other Bitcoin plays like, uh, um, for example, we got few few more here. Um, Ride Blockchain as an example, BTBT. BT. Uh, you could look at those also and uh, buy them too. And then we got Bumble here. It's an online dating site. Um, I think it just got, became IPO maybe uh, last last year or so. Stock has dropped significantly, and it's got uh, you know RSI perspective 55. It's okay to buy moderately here. Nice gross margin. I like this gross margin here. Last one is uh, Fastly, one of the content delivery network play. I think they made some issue with their uh, glitches um, two weeks ago. Uh, stock is down 58%. Um, I would uh, wait for a small pullback here and buy this company, great company. Right now, RSA 60, that tells you, watch out and wait for a small pullback. Next, we'll look at mid-cap weekly losers. Uh, the way this chart is organized is we got one week here performance. The one at the top has lost most in one week. So, you know, that's how it's organized here. Uh, no surprise here. We got uh, United States Steel here uh, on the top, uh, biggest loser in last one week. And even I think as you see here, two week, um, one month it's lost. You know, mainly with the interest rate going higher um, and um, dollar uh, becoming strong, that's why these uh, stocks like United Steel will take some backseat here and uh, stabilize. I'll be looking at them slowly, no no rush here, buy slowly as they pull back and uh, take it from there. So, and as you look at companies here, we got gold stocks down, fuel cell, it's into uh, energy, that's also down. Um, the stocks highlighted in the green background like Cage, uh, Kinross, fuel cell, Tilray, GFI, uh, even Tiger, which is up tech, it's a you know China-based uh, fintech play. You could add to your position slowly and uh, take it from there. And you know also watch out for gross margin here. Many of these companies like KGC, nice gross margin, nice net margin. I love those uh, margins. And even Helcom Mining H H L, it's also has got a good gross and net margin. Um, so you could look at some some of these companies, even GFI, I love this company, and uh, Yamaha Gold, same story. Uh, next, let's look at uh, large cap weekly winners here. The way this chart is organized is by one week uh, performance. Even these large cap stocks, look at the way they've done in one week. It's a nice performance. Um, I would not be chasing these companies as you um, probably realized by now. 
and few of my favorites at this point are Square. It's down 16% from 52-week high. Jack Dorsey, who is the CEO, has got a great vision. He's really combining the credit card company. Also, he's trying to become the banking powerhouse. That will give him very good uh, scale for the future. I would buy Square on any pullback. Right now, it's up. Wait for a pullback and then buy. Splunk, you know, this company has been in the dumps for a long time. Now, slowly, it's recovering down 43% from 52 week high. I would buy Splunk on any weakness and, uh, you know, have a nice position here. Uh, only one thing I have to watch out is they got a little bit high debt on their balance sheet. I think they have to kind of manage it. And same story with stocks like Carvana, Square. Square is understandable. It's trying to become a banking company. It's really very good company they got a lot of vision for the future next let's look at large cap losers these are a few of my favorite stocks i'll be watching these companies carefully and try to build a nice position and ready for them to bounce back curevac um, stock has dropped drastically in one week 37 percent drop um you know i, I bought some of this uh, stock here i'll be watching this company slowly and building a nice position here uh, EDU, again, China-based edu online edu education company. Um, stock has been dropping like a rock. It's okay to slowly add position, no need to rush, uh, slowly add to position. This will also come back to, um, you know, come back and do well in the future, but probably it will take a while for it to play out. We've got a couple more here, Novax, uh, Whips. Uh, I think they've dropped significantly here. Um, down 47 10%. It's okay to buy slowly on this weakness. Uh, they got, uh, as you can see here, Whips has got good gross margin and okay net margin. No surprise here, all these miners like Cleveland Cliffs, uh, Freeport, they're all down big, even uh, Axler. Um, I think these, these stocks are all down, all these uh, uh, mining type companies. I would be looking at them selectively. Look at the ones with the nice gross margin and nice net margin, like say um, Freeport is also okay. This company is known to go up and down drastically, especially with uh, these type of environment. I would wait for a little more pullback here. Uh, they're up nicely. They're down 24%. I would wait for a little bit pullback, add slowly to the position. There is no hurry. Um, next, we got uh, Roblox here. Roblox is $81 stock. It was a Wall Street um, darling while ago. It's uh, trying to, I think it's lost 22% here. I would be buying slowly here, no hurry. Slowly buy and add to position. Uh, then we got a couple more here. Um, Sylvain, um, Penn, uh, even Citigroup. It's okay to add slowly to position and take it from there. Um, all these silver stocks are down as you can see here. Main, most of these uh, miners are down. I meant copper stock. So if you look at the mega cap winners here, these are the big 250 billion plus companies. Um, you know, I will not be chasing these winners here, but I'll be looking at some of these companies a little carefully. For example, Netflix here, $500 stock down 16%. Uh, legendary CEO with the Reed, Reed Hasting. I would buy this one any pullback here. Right now it's up uh, for the day, week and two week. Any weakness I'll buy slowly and accumulate a nice position here. And same story Alibaba. Alibaba finally getting its groove back as you can see here. It's been uh, in the crosshairs of Chinese government for a long time. I would buy slowly and you know build a small position here down 34 percent from 52 week high 10 cents same story uh, buy a little bit on the weakness and uh, build a nice position taiwan semi is one of the great companies uh, semiconductor shortage as you all know this is a powerhouse when it comes to semiconductor i would buy slowly on this weakness and build a small position here next is mega cap weekly losers so i'll be looking at these companies carefully the first one on top uh, legendary CEO Larry Ellison, sorry, uh, founder uh, Larry Ellison and CEO Safra Katz. I would be buying this company um, slowly into this weakness and build a nice position. They are down 10% from 50 to 52 week high. Larry will always be in news. He will try to be relevant all the time. 
uh, Intel, Intel, they got a new CEO, Pat Gilsinger. Stock has been uh, doing nicely after that. I would buy it on this weakness. I think, you know, they will do well. The previous CEO, I think uh, he, has, he did not manage the company well. That's why the company has lost its groove. And uh, they basically gave back the lead to AMD of late. I think this company will do well with the Pat's leadership. We've got a couple more here. Disney, Home Depot, uh, Taiwan Semi. I think all are okay to buy on this weakness and build a small position here. So with that, thank you very much. Happy investing and trading. Please subscribe.